Terry with you from D Lab, and in the shop today, I have a Polk Audio powered tower speaker that unfortunately was damaged in shipping. It's got busted uh, binding posts on the back, and unfortunately, they're very hard to locate. So, I'm going to show you a way to repair these speakers and maintain their stock condition and operation. All right, so if you look here, you can see the busted jacks. There should be four of these. It should have been like a dual binding post here. It goes in like that, right? But three of them are broken off. And somebody kind of rigged them, put wire behind it, and tried to operate it that way, which unfortunately is not the right way to go. So I'm going to show you how we can replace these jacks and bring these speakers back into operation. All right, let's remove the amplifier section, and I'm going to show you what the dilemma is. So obviously we have the busted off jacks, they're not usable. Now you would think, boy, I could just uh, maybe buy a new set of jacks and put them in here. Well, you can't because this has a molded assembly back here, okay? But what I found is, I could pop this nut off of here, all right? And then this part of the jack will come out, which leaves this cavity here. Okay, and I thought, well, it'd be great if my new jacks would go in there, but unfortunately, the new jacks don't have this little collar here. You see that little collar? That has to seat in here. Otherwise, these things look almost identical, okay? But that's always the way it goes, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is we're going to remove this collar, and we're going to add it to this jack. We'll see how it goes. At this point, I've removed the three defective jacks. We're going to keep this one here since it's fine. Here are the jack pieces that were left in those holes, okay? And since I want to retrieve these hubs to mount my new jacks, I'm going to take these on my milling machine. I'm going to remove this damaged area here that you see so that they're flat. Then I'm going to drill them out so I can pop these hubs off and they're going to go on the new jacks. So let's see how it goes. Here we are at the D-Lab milling machine. This is also in my shop. I bought this machine for about 2,500 bucks to fix 50 cent jacks. Pretty good thinking, huh? Anyway, if you don't have a mill, you can still do this operation. If you're real careful with a file or a Dremel tool, I think you could pull the same thing off. But let's mill these off and uh, we'll go from there. So here's the jacks mounted very securely in this vise. Use a little bit of uh, tap magic here to get the process to go easy. I'm going to take a rough cut first just to see how this material cuts and then we'll go back and do the finished cuts. Alright, well I found that all three of the jacks are kind of moving around, so I'm going to have to do them individually. So this will be the final cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to touch off on the surface, and I'll come across and remove the rest of this material. Okay, so there we are. Pretty much flush, slight groove over here, but not a big deal. This hub's nice and thick. I just need to use it as a locator. So let me get the other two done, and then we'll see about drilling them. Success. So I've cleaned up the damaged area on the top of these little hubs. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put them back in the mill. We're gonna center drill them until these caps can pop off. Then I'll put these on the new jacks. So we have the drill installed. This is a very small center drill that I'm going to use. Now to make sure I'm pretty much on the center here, I'm going to scribe 
this thing, all right? Got a set of calipers. Might as well try to get her as close as possible. Although in this case, it's really not too critical because there is a lot of slop in these old plastic jacks. So let me get this thing centered and we'll drill it. All right, so we are at our center point, okay? Throw a little tap magic on there to help it along. Drill it. So that will get us well on our way. Nice center point. The next drill, we're going to go a bigger size. It's going to knock that hub off. I put some spacer washers underneath so when she lets loose it won't go into my vise and damage it. So this will be the new jack that we're going to install, okay? So like I said before, we're going to put the hub on this shaft. So I'm measuring that shaft and it's approximately 0.21 inches, okay? And I found a, a 11 64th drill is about 0.2. So that's what I'm going to start with. We'll see how it fits. So we're center drilled. Before I go with the big 0.2 inch drill, I'm going to go into it with the eighth inch drill first, just to pilot it. Now we'll switch over to the bigger drill. So here's a larger drill. Let's see if that head pops off. She goes just like I was hoping I got my washers All right, so here we have it okay got a new little hub it'll slide over here now you can see we still got a little bit of a force fit there so I'm gonna have to open it up just slightly but I'd rather have it too small than too large at this point all right so next clean up my mess here and I'm gonna get the other two pieces and do the same procedure on them I won't show you that but then uh, we'll go to how to install them into the stock jacks on the pokes. Should be a cool project. Well, here we have it, people. So here's our little new hub that needs to go on this surface, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it there, and then we're gonna use a X-Lite socket. We're gonna kinda do a little mini press operation. Just gonna tap it on there with a hammer. And there we have it. The modified jack. We may have to tap that in a little more. We're going to go test fit it first. So after uh, putting the ring on the first one, I noticed that there is a little seat here. Okay, There's a little line here. And uh, these little hubs actually need to go right to that line. It was kind of like it was designed for this. So you put that down there, thing seats perfectly. Let me show you what they look like installed. You wouldn't even know it. All right, so we have a little bit of a interference fit problem here. Just because these threads are hitting, this hole is actually kind of oval instead of round. So we're gonna take that same drill that we used down the mill. I'm just gonna open these up a little bit. You can see we're not taking much plastic at all. Just enough to allow the jack go in there like it's supposed to. All right, so here they are. This was the original. Here's the three new jacks that I've installed. And as you can see, they all got the same seats down there like they did originally. I think they look absolutely stock. I'm kind of impressed with myself on this project. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get them wired up on the back side and see if these speakers work. Here we are, backside. Everything lines back up in those original Hulk jack holders, just like it used to be. So let me reinstall the amp, and I'll show you the finished product. The amplifier panel is reinstalled. Here's the new jacks, the one original. Now one of these uh, shorting bars was missing, so I just cut some out of some brass I had around. Okay, got her all reconfigured. She's plugged in, powered up, and I've got a CD player hooked to it. So let's see if it works. 
So here we are at the grand finale. Got the pole cooked up to this little laughing idiot amp CD player on it. So let's see what it sounds like. Here's the uh, subwoofer adjust over here. Ka boom bidi boom boom boom. We'll take a mission accomplished on that. Hope you enjoyed the demo. I know that it takes a lot to do this kind of work, but I'm very meticulous about what I do. I just want to pass on these tech tips to you. So take care. We'll see you again. Terry at D-Lab. See you.